So there's many great sharpening methods out there, different algorithms. But one of the things I think Smart Sharpen is very good at is prominence sharpening. Now, if you use unsharp mask or deconvolution or wavelets or whatever, you can apply sharpening across the entire image, but what you'll also do is that dark background area. You'll start sharpening the noise and amplifying the noise in those areas. One of the advantages of Smart Sharpen is that you can control some of that by using the shadows and highlights reduction features. So let's go ahead and give this a whirl. I have a interesting set of prominences here. I've got Smart Sharpen open. I like to get about 200%. I've got an area here where I can see the brighter, the fainter, and the background of the prominence. So at this point, of course, I'm on lens blur. More accurate is checked because there's fine little details in there. And I'm going to crank the radius up. Now I'm going to start pushing up the amount. I normally just go ahead and crank it up to about 100% and see the difference. Again, click on the preview window to remove the effect and release it and you will see what's happening. So I'm starting to get a nice amount of sharpening. If I increase the radius and you start getting these dark ridges. So in this particular case, somewhere around again three and a half to four pixels, I'm going to leave it at four. I'm going to go ahead and start cranking up that amount. Now one thing you want to be careful of is because if you want to colorize these grayscale areas, I'm going to zoom in to 300 percent and you can see the noise that's happening here. I'm going to crank it all the way up. It gets worse and worse. So somewhere about 150 percent, I like the sharpening I'm getting here but the amount of noise I would like to leave behind. So let's start at the shadows. So at this point I'm going to take the radius and make it a, about one to two pixels larger than my sharpening radius. You can experiment with these settings but this is what I like to start out with. And at this point I'm going to take my fade amount up to about 50 percent and then start cranking in the tonal width. I'm trying to reduce the amount of sharpening in these darker areas. If I take this all the way up to about 50 percent, as you can see it removes the sharpening but it also removes a lot of the detail. So I like to go about halfway there, maybe about 20 percent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the fade amount on the shadows all the way to 100% because I want to almost remove all the, all the sharpening in the darkest regions. Now let me say if you're good with masking, you can go ahead and crank that all the way up, save it as another image, apply the proper mask and mask this in against a very smooth background or replace the background. But what we're trying to do here is keep things simple and see if we can do this with a one pass application. So I think I'm liking that at this point, getting good sharpening, but I'm leaving lots of that noise behind. Now my highlights, my bright areas here, are not all that bright. So I'm going to do a small radius, very small fade amount, maybe around 20 percent, with a small tonal width. Now I'll go back and see if I can even crank in more. And with these controls in place, you can really take it to the edge and the limit. So it looks like again around three and a half pixels I'm happy with. As this prominence fades out, the sharpening gets less and less. Of course, no sharpening algorithm on its own is perfect. But Smart Sharpen that comes with CS2 on up is a very nice free tool, as you will, that can provide great results on its own. And of course, learning to use these techniques with layers and masks will greatly enhance your ability to create dynamic images. I hope these methods will help you enjoy your image processing and get better results. Thanks.